Hey everybody, this is Chris again and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you a little bit about the differences between American English and British English grammar. Now, you might know that there are a lot of spelling differences between British English and American English, and even some words that are different in the two places. This is something that you might not know about, and a lot of native speakers don't even know about this. So I thought I'd clear up the differences for you in a short video. So first of all, there can be some differences in prepositions between American English and British English. So what do I mean by a preposition, this long word? I'm talking about words like at, in, on, under, and so on. And in most cases, these are the same, but there can be some small differences. And before I go over these, I need to say that not all people in the UK will say it in one way and all people in America will say it another way. Some people will mix and match. So you can't say that these are always the case, but these are general principles that uh, you can pick up. So in the UK, we say at the weekend, but in the US, you'd be more likely to hear on the weekend. For example, what are you doing at the weekend? In the UK, you probably hear this and at is pronounced at, at, or even at, at, like that with a glottal stop. We don't say the T, at the weekend, at the weekend. But in the US, it'd be on the weekend. What are you doing on the weekend? So when you've learned English in the past, you may have learned on the weekend, but did you know that this is actually more of an American English expression? So we can also say at weekends in the UK or on weekends in the US. For example, I like to relax at weekends or I like to relax on weekends. So you could say at the weekend or at weekends. Either would be fine. It's just the preposition that's different in the two cases. Another example could be festivals like uh, Christmas. In the UK, we'd probably say at Christmas. I always go home at Christmas. But in the US, you'd be more likely to hear on Christmas. I always go back home on Christmas. So this would be on in the US. However, this gets a little bit more complicated because even in the UK, we would normally say on Christmas day. So when we say a particular day, we normally say on that day. So if it's Christmas day, we would probably say on Christmas Day or on Christmas morning. This would be the same in American English and British English. And by the way, Canada uses a lot of American English, but it might occasionally use some things from British English. So if you are Canadian or you've spent a lot of time in Canada, you can tell me uh, the situation there. But more likely it's going to follow American style English. Here's another example of a preposition that might be different in the US and the UK. I'm usually at work Monday to Friday. This is what we would normally say in the UK. But in the US, some people might say Monday through Friday. I'm usually at work Monday through Friday. The next one is again with on. I went there on Thursday. So you can say this in British English or American English. But sometimes in American English, you wouldn't say the word on. You could just say I went there Thursday. You wouldn't have to say on Thursday. I went there Thursday would be enough. But in the UK, you wouldn't normally hear this. So sometimes this is even missed out in American English. Another example is when you use the word different. In the UK, we normally say different to something. But in the US, it would normally be different than. For example, this one is different to the rest. This is what we'd say in the UK. And in the US, it'd probably be this one is different than the rest. If you've read American English uh, novels or American TV series, you probably heard different than. However, both places use different from. For example, your car is a different color from mine. So different something from something else. This is what we say in the UK and it's also used in the US. The only difference in these two sentences is the spelling of the word color. There are some slightly different spellings in American English, but we can get into that in a different video. Another difference between the grammar of British English and American English can be used of past tenses. So in American English, when you're talking about something that happened recently, in the recent past, you'd probably be more likely to use the simple past tense than the present perfect tense. So what does that mean? A lot of grammar words. It basically means that in the UK, we'd be more likely to say, 
I've already eaten. I've eaten. This is called the present perfect tense. But in the US, you could say, I already ate. This is the present simple tense. And it's used more in the US, as I said, for things that happened maybe today or very recently. Now in the UK, if you had already, it would be more likely have already done something. Another example, have you had dinner yet? This is the present perfect tense. It's what we'd normally use in the UK. But in the US, you might say, did you eat dinner yet? So, did you eat? So, this is using the simple past tense. It doesn't have the word have in it. So, it's not the present perfect. However, it's worth saying that some people now would speak more in an American way, even in the UK. So, you might hear the American English version in the UK as well. It's possible. But for actions that happened longer ago, we would probably use the same tense in American English and British English. For example, if you did something last year, like I went to France last year, you would say I went both in American English and British English. You wouldn't say I have gone to. So a lot of the time it's the same. And it's worth saying that most of the time American English and British English do use the same grammar. In American English, the verb got has a form gotten for the past participle. So let's, what does that mean? If you're saying has got in British English, in American English, this would be has gotten. For example, your son has got bigger since I last saw him. This would be what we would say in the UK. And in the US, it'd be your son has gotten bigger, has gotten bigger since I last saw him. So has got in the UK and has gotten in the US. In, in the UK, we don't have such a word as gotten. This is considered very old fashioned, maybe like uh, English from a couple of hundred years ago. But in the US, this is standard. Another example, have you got any information? This would be what we would say in the UK. And in the US, have you gotten any information? So here's another one. The past tense of the verb dive in the US is normally dove, whereas in the UK, it would be dived. Let me give you an example. I dived into the swimming pool. This would be what we would say in the UK. But in the US, you might say, I dove into the swimming pool. There's also a bird, a white bird called a dove. This is the same in both places. But in the US, we also have dove, which is a verb. Kind of confusing, right? There are also some verbs that are used a little bit differently in the US to the UK. So for example, in the UK, we might say, fill in a form. Please fill in this form. But in the US, you might be more likely to say, fill out. Another example is the verb write. In the UK, we would normally say, write to somebody. But in the US, you probably say, write somebody. So, in, for example, you could say, I promise I'll write to you every week. This is in the UK. In the US, it'd be, I'll write you every week. So, to me, this sounds a little bit strange, but you might have heard this if you've uh, been exposed to American English. Lastly, there can be different ways of saying numbers and dates in American English to British English. And these dates can be written in the same way, but they're said differently, or they can be said differently. For example, look at this date at the top, July the 12th. That would be what we would say in the UK. We could say July the 12th or the 12th of July. Notice that we have the, July the 12th. But in the US, you'd be more likely to hear July 12th or July 12th. So there's no the in the middle. So Americans, when they come to the UK, uh, this is one difference that they notice. So another difference is in numbers. So look at this number on the screen. In the UK, we'd say 220. We'd have the word and in this, which is pronounced and. 220. But in the US, you'd probably hear 220. They wouldn't say and, it'd be 220. So the difference is you don't say the and in most cases. I don't think it would be wrong to say it. It's just that a lot of people in the US or most people would not say it. If you have a bigger number, it would normally be the same. 2,220. This would be what we would say in the UK. But in the US, the beginning is the same, but we don't have and at the end. 2,220. So we don't say and at the end. It's the same principle. We've just added something onto the beginning. A couple more quick ones now. In the UK, you'd be more likely to say go and do something. Whereas in the US, you might say go do something. For example, I need to go and have a shower. 
This is in the UK. And in the US, he might say, I need to go have a shower. So here we don't have go and, we just say go. Okay, so the last difference is what we call collective nouns. So this is when we're talking about maybe a country, a company, or an organization that is made up of a lot of different people. But if we're talking about this in the UK, we could use the plural. We could say, my team are going to win. My team are, the team are doing something. But in the US, normally you would have to use the singular. You could say, my team is going to win. So this one can be used in both British English and American English. In the UK, you could also use the plural, but probably this would be seen as wrong in the US. So it's a slight difference, and here there is a lot of overlap. So the first one could be used in both places. So sometimes American English or American style phrases can be used in the UK, or there is um, some overlap between the two places. So that's something you'll have to bear in mind. All right, so I hope you found this video useful and learned something that you didn't know before about British English and American English. If there's something you would like me to talk about in a video, especially related to pronunciation, please do let me know in the comments and don't forget to sign up on my website to get my emails and receive all of my updates. Subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you very soon.